Hi, I'm Jonathan, the Provident Prepper. Storing water is an important part of your preparedness plan. Do you know how to store water in a 55 gallon barrel? So often we have people confess to us that they purchased their water barrels but they're sitting somewhere unused because they are not quite sure how to go about this. So we are going to discuss in this video five treatment methods so that you can disinfect your water for long-term storage in 55 gallon barrels. As we all know, water storage is an important part of our preparedness efforts. We hope that you will Google the Provident Prepper tips for storing water in a 55 gallon plastic barrel and this video is based off of that post. First, let's talk about what it is that everybody's so afraid of in the water. Let's give it a face so you understand what we are trying to do. First, there's viruses, which are very, very small. Then there's bacteria, which are medium-sized, and protozoa, which are actually very large. Each of these can give you waterborne pathogens and can be very dangerous. We also have to address chemical contaminants. Uh, these may be present in our water. Now, most of the water that we drink is very clean and you don't have to worry about these things, but if there are chemicals in your water that you've gotten out somewhere after some kind of an event, you need to be aware that there may be chemicals in there that could be dangerous in addition to the other pathogens we've just talked about. That's why it's so important to store water. When you fill your water barrels, usually that water is coming from a municipal water supply where the chemicals are monitored and taken care of and you shouldn't really have to worry about that. So water that you've stored will be safer than anything you could find during a disaster. Check out our post, Making Water Safe to Drink, seven disinfection techniques to learn how to disinfect water. Obviously, we need to start with a clean, sanitized barrel. A new food grade barrel is probably your best solution if that fits in your finances. If you have access to used barrels, those are fine as long as they have not contained anything that you wouldn't drink or eat. So let's do a little bit of true confession here. We don't have a lot of financial resources sometimes, and so what we'd like a lot of water storage. So we have used some very unique barrels. We have used Dr. Pepper barrels and some that have held some lemon limes and even some that have held essential oils, lemon essential oil. Now let me tell you what happens when you have these used barrels with these flavors. Plastic is permeable and whatever the contents of that barrel contained is going to leach into the plastic. Once you fill it up with water, it's gonna leach back out into your water. Now, with a taste of lemon lime, it's not a big deal. So every time we rotate the water in the used barrels, that taste gets fainter and fainter. And so what we do is we just plan to be able to filter any water that we've stored in used barrels to make sure that it's good to drink. It's more important that you store water than that you purchase new barrels. That's our point. Optimally, new barrels are the best that you can do. However, it's more important that you store water. This method of treatment is actually a non-method of treatment. And, and there are many that subscribe to this philosophy that you just put the water in there. And especially if you live in a city where you have a treated water supply, you're probably just fine putting it in there. Now, from my perspective, I will always filter that on the back end. Before we use it, we will filter that water. Most water is clean, and if you put clean water in a clean barrel, there is really not a lot that can go wrong. There are disadvantages of treating it with chlorine up front. Yes, that, that is right. Uh, if you have water that may have some organics in it, uh, the chlorine residual does interact with the organics and creates what they call disinfection byproducts. And this is a big deal in the municipal water industry. Those are highly regulated because they are carcinogens and do cause other problems. So this is maybe one advantage of doing the no treatment method and then treating on the back end. Calcium hypochlorite is actually my favorite way to treat because I think that calcium hypochlorite is a fantastic tool for emergency preparedness. You only need an eighth of a teaspoon 
to disinfect an entire 55 gallon drum. If, you've, if your water is cloudy or questionable, you might wanna use a quarter of a teaspoon, but it takes very, very little calcium hypochlorite to disinfect the barrel. So you fill the barrel up first, and then you just put that in, tighten the lid, let it sit, and 24 hours later, you should be able to unscrew that lid and you should smell a little bit of chlorine. If you do, put the lid back on and you're good to go. If not, that means that the chlorine or the calcium hypochlorite, when it's been killing all the bad bugs, it used up all those little chlorine soldiers and you need to treat it one more time. But even a faint smell is just fine. So this is a bag of calcium hypochlorite. That one pound bag will treat 10,000 gallons of water. One of the reasons why we really like it is because it has about a 10 year shelf life. If you Google our post, The Provident Prepper Disinfecting Water Using Calcium Hypochlorite, you'll get all the details on it. One of the things that I do is I make a stock solution. For disinfecting the 55 gallon drum, I do not do that because it only takes that eighth of a teaspoon and I can measure that. But if you're going to disinfect smaller amounts of water, you make a stock solution which you would use similar to household bleach. Way. You do need to be careful when using household bleach for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's all kinds of different bleaches on the shelf. If you're going to use household bleach, you need to make sure it is just the straight, regular bleach without any additives, uh, scents, colors, thickeners, any of that kind of stuff. It has to be just the pure, regular bleach. Bleach has a downside. Over time, it degrades in its strength. And so after six months, that bleach is degrading enough that you're not truly gonna be able to get the disinfection power you need. Because once that bleach is manufactured, it weakens every day, it gets a little bit weaker and a little bit weaker and a little bit weaker. And about six months, it no longer has the strength to kill all of the bugs that are in your water. The household bleach contains the chemical sodium hypochlorite, and that is the active ingredient that kills the bugs in the water. It takes two tablespoons to disinfect a 55 gallon drum. Make sure you're only using that fresh, recently purchased, unscented household bleach. This water preserver concentrate is another product that is on the market. It does kill the bacteria, viruses, molds, and funguses. Uh, again, it is sodium hypochlorite, similar to the bleach, but it doesn't have all the other stuff that bleach has in it. It is stabilized and pH balanced. It is a little bit pricey at $25 to treat 55 gallon barrel. So it is kind of a pricey thing, but it's certainly an option. And another product that we've looked at is chlorine dioxide. Kills protozoas and bacteria and viruses. So you can see normally chlorine will not take care of the protozoas, but this product does. It is a stronger oxidizer and it uses oxygen to disinfect. Again, it's a little bit pricier than most treatment methods at $17 for a 55 gallon barrel, but certainly an option that's available to you. One of the things that this does is it actually improves the taste of the water. All you have left in the water is some salts. That's what you have residual once the job is done. All of these methods will disinfect the water. Some of them are less expensive, some of them are more expensive, but all of them will do the job. We believe that water rotation is optional, but not required. Again, if you put clean water into a clean barrel, there's really not a lot that can go wrong. And as I mentioned, I will be filtering that water on the back end anyway. For me to rotate my water, I don't think it's really necessary. You also need to make sure you can access your water with ease. Sometimes people put water in the barrels and then they say, I don't even know how to get it out of here. And of course there are pumps that you can use, but you want to have the tools to be able to access that water, which includes a bung wrench. And you can use other things like channel lock pliers, but the bung wrench just makes it so much easier. And then you need some kind of a pump or siphon device that is easy to use and will allow you to get to your water. As Kylie mentioned, the critical thing is that you have some water stored. If you've got water stored, then you have options. You have the ability to clean it up, you have the ability to use it for whatever purpose, but if you have no water stored, you are at the mercy of nature and whatever else is happening. These are used barrels that we obtained free that held syrups. 
So Dr. Pepper, lemon lime, all those. Because the barrels are transparent, algae will grow in them. One of the things that we've done to compensate for that is to cover it with a really thick black plastic tarp. And then we just weight it down with pallets on the top and we tuck it in in the bottom. Is it optimal? Are these barrels new? No, but guess what? We have a whole lot of water stored there that we were able to do for free. So do whatever you need to do to make sure that you have water stored. Here are some really good resources that we hope that you will look at. Look at tips for storing water in a 55 gallon barrel. And that is the post that this video was created from. Also, we hope that you will Google the Provident Prepper Emergency Water, 17 potential sources for a lot more good information. So, no more excuses. You have the information now, and it's very simple to get that water into storage. So let's get it done. And now for the questions of the day. Do you have water barrels that are sitting empty? If so, what are you going to do about it? And what have you learned that might benefit others? Thanks for being part of the solution.